So Motorcycles I've Loved has proven to be juvenile and exhausting. Um, I just wanted to run over three quick pages in the interest of footnotes, outstanding questions I had about the text. So on page 90, she does say she applied to the University of Massachusetts at Amherst, but she never says that she was really accepted. She says that the logistics fell into place, like Bill Clinton, what is the definition of is, and enrolled over the summer. Typically, summer sessions are open enrollment. And then we hear nothing more of her studies other than she drank a whole lot and played around with kanji flashcards. Surprised there was no mention of Hayabusa fairings as some sort of self-styled curriculum. Um, <clears throat> I applied to one school, so this is her self-handicapping or you know making it sound better than it was because she would never admit to any sort of rejection, of course. <clears throat> I applied to one school, the University of Massachusetts at Amherst, because it was close and cheap. Tuition is over $17,000 a year. Um, this was a little while ago, so it might have been a bit less. Um, that's for in-state, out-of-state, it's like 38 or 40. And then of course you have her living expenses, alcohol expenses, tires, etc. cetera. Um, <clears throat> I'd applied to one school, the University of Massachusetts Amherst, because it was close and cheap. And once I sent in the application, the logistics fell into place. Now she's very, very clear, very proud, very triumphant about anything where she could say, I was accepted, I, you know. So I'm pretty sure she was accepted as a summer student only or else on the book jacket, it would mention more than her associate's degree. <clears throat> um, I applied to one school, the University of Massachusetts Amherst, because it was close and cheap. And once I sent in the application, the logistics fell into place. I enrolled, oh, I enrolled over the summer as a junior. I mean, she could just say, oh, yeah, I'm a junior because I have my associate's degree. It doesn't matter if they really recognize those credits. I really enrolled her as a student. And suddenly my rambling way of life, lazy mornings, work in the evenings, I um, question that. Then drinking till dawn, that sounds like the only true part, shifted into strenuously organized, deeply purposeful existence. <clears throat> but then we never hear about any of her studying after that. And then if you go to 104, you have the greenhouse story, which is how everything really goes, right? <clears throat> Despite the dilapidation, the space had captured my imagination when I moved in. The idea of a sunny, steamy room full of parsley and cilantro and flats of seedlings waiting to be planted thrilled me. But as with the CM250, I never managed to get things going. So that was a nice motorcycle she was gifted from a deceased fellow. Yeah, I thought about getting the uh, James Parker bike, who was an acquaintance of my dad. It was GSXR 1000 for sale this summer. And the whole idea was to bequeath it to the shop that they would get a young intern to fix it up and stuff. And so that sort of happened. But I'm kind of glad I didn't get it. You know, it's just sentimental. Oh yeah, and what was, okay, so 159 is what happens to the bikes before the Magna. So the sentimental CM250 is unceremoniously sold. I had not one, two, but three motorcycles in the driveway. The Rebel, the CM, the Silverwing, all in a row. <clears throat> Rejoice to see the, some of it go, blah, blah, blah. What part should we read here? I guess all of it in the time I s sit here talking. But... Um, The Rebel, the CM, and the Silverwing were all in a row. The CM was worth next to nothing at this point, and finding an amateur mechanic to come haul it away was a piece of cake. I rejoiced to see it go. <clears throat> By then, it was only a reminder of my failure to do anything but dissect it. Oh, yeah, because that's fun on alcohol and Adderall. Just take this shit apart. And what had helped me understand the innards of a motorcycle somewhat. Mm -hmm. My grand plans to make it run had fallen flat on their unrealistic faces, <laughs> such as her life. The rebel, on the other hand, felt like an old friend and wanted to make sure she found a good home. The head chef, Zach, had been admiring her for months. Oh, I forgot this part. This is worth reading. Yeah, she doesn't even give the guy a good price. Super rich chick. It's ridiculous. Listen to this. The head chef, Zach, had been admiring her for months. 
So when it came time to find a buyer, he was my first choice. We haggled a little. He tried to soften my asking price with promises of restaurant gifts, certificates. Zach, I scoffed at him. You already freed me for, feed me for free. We agreed and made plans for the switch off. So that's what became of the bikes. Unceremoniously redistributed.